Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm so thrilled today to be joined by some of the team from the movie King Knight. We are joined today by writer, director, and producer Richard Bates, um, actress and associate producer Angela Serafian, and actress Barbara Crampton. And Richard, I wanted to start by asking you about some of the research that you did into the Wiccan community, because I know that you also have some friends who, who practice Wicca that you spoke to and had read the script to really find that balance of creating a script and a story that was funny, but still really considerate. Um, and through the research and, and the people that you had reading your script, how did you set about really finding that balance and finding that line in the way that you told this film? Well, I, it's very collaborative, right? So, I mean, I, I feel like I started doing research for this in college um, because I was very interested in other religions, um, you know, outside of uh, Christianity, I grew up with a, you know, a family from the South, Southern Baptist and all that stuff. So um, I even in, in school, I made a little documentary about uh, uh, Wiccan store in New York. And um, I uh, befriended some of the people that worked there and it, it just sort of changed the way that I was taught to view them completely. I mean, some of the kindest, you know, uh, sweetest people I've ever met. Um, I mean, they're basically running like a, uh, therapy operation out of there. Mm -hmm. People just come in with their problems and, and they're just so kind and helpful. Um, so I was really moved by that. And then, um, you know, I have a bunch of friends who are witches and all that stuff, but you, you know, before you make a movie, I mean, it's, you know, it's a real pain in the ass. So you got to have like a good reason to do it. And <laughs> so the, uh, the idea that maybe I could change someone's mind about how they viewed witches, uh, you know, made this sort of a worthwhile endeavor, I guess. And, you know, I had, I, I tried to be funny, you know, while being considered. And I had a bunch of friends read various uh, versions of the script. You know, half my book collection is on, you know, witchcraft and all that stuff. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of real stuff in there. And then there's a lot of things that are sort of uh, based on real things, but exaggerated. I mean, the entire movie, you know, it takes place in a heightened version of reality. So it's kind of farcical. And Angela, you ended up being cast and saying yes to being part of this film. It sounds like right before they went into production and started filming. So it sounds like you had very little time to kind of work on character development and pre-production stages. And given that that was, that was the fact, like, did you have to make a lot of very instinctive choices in terms of finding your performance and making choices for your character once you got onto set? So I, I did come in fairly towards the end, but I got a really lovely letter I can't talk. I got a really lovely letter from Richard, Ricky Bates here with the script. And um, my my brother was with me and he read the script. And then I, I, I was in the middle of something else and, and I got a chance to read the first five pages and I had never read anything that had this tone and this humor and not trying to be funny was just funny. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I have to, I have to call this person like right now, I, I, I don't know who Ricky Bates is, I'm gonna call him. So I called him and we had an amazing phone conversation. And I realized very quickly that why wouldn't I do this film? He, first of all, took the money out from a loan. Is that okay that I'm saying this? <laughs> it is, it is. And hopefully it encourages more people to buy the film and keep yes. a roof over my head. Yes. But my point is, it reminded me of John Cassavetes used to do the same thing. He'd make movies, at least this is what I read. And he would take money that he'd make from the movies or his mortgage and put it on a movie. Like he would, he would, and the movies that he has made are, are really special. And I, so going back to this, we had one day of rehearsal. So let's say it was Friday or Saturday. I had my fitting. I met Matthew. I worked with Matthew before and saw Ricky and we sat down, we had a rehearsal, we were reading it, just reading it. And then I saw Matthew's eyes and Ricky's eyes and they sparkled and they were like, that's it. That's the voice. That's, that's Willow right there. And we found it. It wasn't just me. It was like the collaborative nature of the whole thing. And I, I felt that throughout the entire process, Absolutely. I, I did bring off my instincts, but I felt completely supported because Ricky's such a great director. He knows what he wants and he knows how to get it from his actors. And then Matthew also is an incredible like acting partner. Mm -hmm. So the tone was definitely taken care of. And I knew that if I did something that he wasn't going to be happy with, he would, he would let me know. So 
it wasn't like, oh, I had this burden on my shoulders and it was stressful. It was really just like, I trust my director. I trust my co-star and here we go. And it was so fun. Nine. Remember our oh. onset witch thought at the end of the movie that you were a practicing witch. Yeah, he did. Amazing. Yeah. So it was pretty remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. That was a bit long winded, but all real things, you know. No, that was great. And and Barbara, you've mentioned that, that you'd been really interested in working with Ricky for a while. Um, and so what was it that you'd seen in his previous work and, and his voice as a filmmaker that made you really excited to step into a project with him? You know, I don't say this lightly, but Ricky's a genius. He's an auteur. He has a singular voice. He His movies are like no other movies. He's kind of like a John Waters type. He has his own singular thing that he does that nobody else is doing. And you know, it wasn't like I thought, oh, I really want to be in a Ricky Bates movie, but I was a fan ever since Excision. I watched every single one of his movies and I was just a fan and I was just, you know, amazed at the, the work he was doing. And then a- Stop this, stop this. I, uh, uh, I was no, the one who wanted this. Barbara in the movie. No, no, no. I, no. I, I want to work with Barbara for like a thousand fucking years, part of my language. But like this- this, you know, I called my friend, uh, uh, my friend Ted, and I, I yeah. begged him for a number. So this, you, you didn't this, beg him. You said, you said, can I have Barbara's number? And then <laughs> Ted texted me. Ted Gagan directed. We are still here. And Ted said, Ricky Bass wants your number. Can I give it to him? And I said, Yeah. Why does he want my number? Yeah, I want to talk to Ricky. And Ricky called me and said. I want you to be in my next movie. I have a part for you. And I said, okay, I'm in. I didn't read the script. I said, I'm in. I love him. The coolest thing ever. And I wouldn't have imagined it would go down like that. I mean, really, I'm surprised wow. anyone does these movies. I, I, you know, they, it, it's cool. This whole thing was so collaborative. I mean, honestly, it's yeah. Yeah, I and you know, I'll echo what Angela is saying too that you know, Ricky is he's a great director and he really works with you. And sometimes you work with directors and uh they want you to do whatever <clears throat> they want you to do and they sort of like do the part for you. Other directors won't say anything to you. You just go on the set and you say how was that and they go, "Fine. Okay." <laughs> sometimes, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what to yeah. say. They have no clue. No. They don't know what to say. And then yeah. some people are so technically oriented. It's all about where the camera position is. And you're like, I'm an actor. What, you know, what do you think? So you, 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 you know, you have to work within the framework of whoever your director is, however they want to work, what their voice is. You have, you, you're in their movie. So you have to work with whatever they're giving you. And with Ricky, I just feel like it was, it was easy because yeah, I mean, in one scene, I said, I don't know, I could do it like this or I could do it like this. What do you think? And he said, well, show me both versions. And then I did. And he goes, well, I kind of like that one. And, you know, so then we talked about it a little bit more and I, it was just easy. And then you do the scene and then he might have some adjustments for you, but they were never intrusive. They were always really supportive and collaborative and encouraging. And I, it was just fun. It was just really fun. And, and Barbara's character, as I wrote it, was was a lot more one note. It was an issue that I was having and and kind of trying to reconcile while we we're shooting it. And then Barbara came up with this scene that sort of changed everything. You know what I mean? Well, you I have to be one open. Little to motion. I did one little motion in the last scene, because if if this movie is about, you know, reconciling with yourself and being OK with yourself and who you are and being okay with your voice, it's almost, it's almost like, it's, you know, it's like you, Ricky, it's like your character, like being okay with your own voice, but it's also, you know, Matthew trying to find himself and who he is as a person and being okay with that. And, you know, how does that impact his relationship with Willow and whatever? If you, if you look at, I have a relatively small part in the movie, but if you look at where he came from, you kind of can understand because his mother's kind of judgmental, but also why is she like that? And I think that's what Ricky's talking about. And there was one scene at the right. end, right? It was one Absolutely. scene where, where I know that I'm having some exchanges with him and, and Willow. And then, you know, we were, we're on this zoom together and 
it's not going very well. And then you see some issues with the mom and her relationship with her own mom Mm. also in the movie. And then at the end, I just go to bed and I just went like that. I just, you know, just before I turn the light out and Ricky said, that's it. That's it. Just do that. That was a rehearsal, I think. And you said, that, just do that. That's, that, yeah. that's what we need. Yeah, I was very happy. I mean, I mean, that's the thing. It's directing really comes down to casting in most ways, I think. So a cool thing with a movie like this, right, is that I had, you know, you, you direct a movie, you have control over a lot of things, but you don't necessarily have 100% control over who's in it. And in a movie like this, there's not anyone in the movie who I did not want in the movie. I mean, I did the you know, I negotiated the contracts with the, you know, with their representation and everything even. So, so like from the get-go, there's just complete trust because everyone who is there is like a dream, you know what I mean? And then, and it just inherently, everything becomes more collaborative, you know? Mm -hmm. And off the back of of what Barbara was just describing with with your character, you know, there's such like an undercurrent of understanding where the motivations come from for each of these characters in the way that you've you've written them. But that's also where the comedy comes from. The comedy comes from real earnestness and everything being very real to them. You know, for Willow, the idea that her boyfriend was class president and played lacrosse is a genuinely devastating thing because it it unsettles the balance of a community and a family that she's built for herself. You know, and for Barbara, you're, you know, know with your character there's this anger and that comes from like a hurt place in the relationship with her son and where it's ended up and like you said you see that with her and her own mother as well um and so I was interested in for all of you how you really found the comedy from a place of truthfulness and earnestness for your characters well I mean with with Angela for instance she's such a like a brilliant dramatic actress that I it, it worked so well with what we were trying to do, right? The goal, the idea was, you know, no matter how ridiculous the line is, you know, to treat it with uh, complete sincerity and act like you're not acting in a comedy, right? Um, you know, it's sort of uh, low stakes is high stakes, if you will. And Angela, uh, you know, the most ridiculous line on the page, she wouldn't break and could just deliver it completely earnestly and completely seriously. And it was, you know, I I don't even know if she knew she was funny, you know, (laughs) like she would, she she would say something like that, you know, like I I don't do a lot of comedy or whatever. And it was like, Angela, you're fucking amazing. Like, you know, my favorite scene in the movie is the scene when Angela, uh, when Angela finds out that, you know, Matthew played lacrosse, you know, and she just went for it. She, went for it. I that, love it. Is that that moment when she screams and she's yes. like, oh, no! yeah, that was great. I, I get, I always like, that was the one scene where I was really, really worried. I was like, oh, is that crazy? They're going to think I'm insane. And is it too much? You know, is it too much? But you were like, no, this is perfect. This is what I want, which is great. I, I don't do comedies normally. I think the only time I'm funny is if I'm being honest Mm -hmm. and that's how it is in my life too. So I just kind of stick it to that. Everybody that we were working with, they're so funny. Every single person, Andy Milonakis, Josh Feta, Matthew, every, every, uh, Johnny Pemberton, all these actors are so, so, so good with comedy. And I just kind of was like living honestly with them in the, in it. Uh, And that sort of was my approach, which was very, and it was so perfect i mean the 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 pain in your face when you're telling thorn he has something as you know as ridiculous as weak ankles you know what i mean like that's that (laughs) scene could be so stupid angela if there's a hundred percent commitment you know like all these lines like if they're not if there's if it's not done you know uh, completely i think i think i sat everyone down and I usually don't like do like a blanket direction like that. But on the first day, I was like, you're not acting in a comedy. You're acting in Sophie's Choice, mm-hmm. which I think was so crazy that everyone just kind of uniformly jumped in just to see what the hell that would look like, you know? <laughs> and and uh, I like it. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Who else does? 
But you know what? I think, you know, I was thinking about this. I think Matthew, when he would react a very specific way, it would make me laugh. Mm -hmm. Like I would, I would sincerely say the line and then he would just, (laughs) just makes me laugh thinking about it. He'll just respond. Like, it's like that, that image of, of me pushing him on the, what is that? Swing. It's just so funny. He's so serious. (laughs) It makes me laugh. And I mean, I mean that that shot says so much too about you know it's not just lunacy for lunacy's sake. It really says so much about the character. You know what I mean? He's he's kind of st- he's struggling with like his more infantile tendencies, and and you're kind of you know pushing him towards you know being I guess the man that he he uh, can be or should be, you know. And and Angela, kind of going back to that scene in that moment where you have, you know, where Thorne reveals his his sordid past, so-called sordid past to you, and you have that moment with that shriek, I think, you know, everything that Ricky was saying was right. Like, it's the commitment in your performance that makes that scene work so well. And I was even interested, like, with the shriek, you know, it's not even like just one moment, it's an ongoing, like, you kind of keep coming back to it until she eventually leaves the room. Was that something where you found that in your performance the first take, or did you need to kind of try a few different things? things to land on what we ended up seeing in the film um I think it was it was the first take right first second it was just yeah I think we got it like that pretty much every time and the first time you, you, you know because you're I mean you're very smart and and you did you said you know you said I'll, I'll try it but are you sure and and of course it was it is um you know an enormous film it, it that would be too much and your instinct was, was completely right but you were kind enough to just just say all right and go for it and I, I think yeah and you just completely rocked it you know it's it's a highlight of the trailer right <laughs> people love it yeah they love it yeah well I'm glad I'm really happy that it was a success I trust you completely Ricky you know I trust you you know what works I know I know when he was happy and he was happy pretty much most of the time all of it almost. Yeah. so so I'm really glad that he was happy you know I talked to to this other writer and he was saying about that scene that it was interesting because she was upset that he was prom king and class president and a jock, right? Who played sports. And I was thinking about this. I was thinking, well, Willow's judging him too. Mm-hmm. Like the judgment's going right. both ways because, mm-hmm. because she's saying, well, you have to be this in order for us to connect. But maybe in reality, we can be from two ends of the spectrum and still be in connection, which is what Willow and Thorn are. Right, just, but- just because people wear Ralph Lauren blood flows through their veins, just like the rest of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Barbara, for you as well, you know, the the first time that we meet your character is on a video chat with her son. And, you know, you again are able to just like have that commitment and escalation in the scene where there's kind of no exchange of niceties for her at the beginning, even though she clearly hasn't spoken to her son in quite a long time, you're able to kind of completely escalate her into that place of anger and frustration. Did you find that having read the script and knowing that there was that background and and reveal of empathy and understanding where she was coming from allowed you to kind of commit even further in that initial antagonist? Antagonistic moment. I mean, I think where she, you know, because of where she ends up and you kind of, I think you might feel a little sorry for her. I did as a, as a performer playing the character, I think she had to start on that high note. Um, yeah. So. And also I, you were so cool about that scene. Yeah. Okay. So Barbara's so confident that like, I, I, I kept being like, Barbara, can you just keep getting closer to the lens? It's distorting your face and making you look weird. Get a little bit and she's she's like absolutely you know she had no problem just getting in there and having fun with it um you know it was just cool that's in a small in small movies like mine the actors really are your special effects you know so it's the most exciting thing uh you know and so i don't know i I just say that too your your best special effect is your actor yeah it's just Mm -hmm. it's true especially if you watch this movie i mean it's just it's all performance Mm -hmm. And I love that moment as well where Thorne's left, you know, 
a steaming pile of shit on her front doorstep and you walk out and it feels like you don't even flinch. And so it feels like he's definitely tried to antagonize her many times before. Was that something that you came up with in your performance or was that kind of a detail in the script of the just not even hesitating? Oh, going, so, of course. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was a moment I wasn't sure exactly how um, how I was going to play that scene. And we, I just tried it a couple of times for Ricky and he said, well, I like that more. So we played around with it a little bit and I did it a few times, I think till, you know, he felt like he had what he wanted. Um, but I had never, never even heard of that. I, for some reason, maybe that's a thing that, that people did or kids do. I don't know, but I'd never heard of leaving. What is it called? Is it, it's a, it's called uh Lighting a bag of shit on fire. Yes, this was uh, certainly a thing where I grew up in Virginia. Is that right? Because yeah. I, because you, oh. you said that, you said this is a thing people do. And I'm like, really? I never heard that. Where, yeah, where did you come from? Yeah, that was fun because we we did try it a bunch of different ways. And also I, I had a line there that was a little too, um, it was really funny that, that Barbara says, it, but I cut it out because it was too like, um, it was a little too wink, wink. It was, it what kind was of, I forget. It was, um, uh, now I've got, uh, uh, I've got poo uh, on my sh something. Uh, oh, yeah. Poo something. On, and now, and now I've got like poo, uh, on my shoe and in my butt or something. Oh yes. That's, you know, I think you said your son really liked that line. <laughs> so that's oh, my talking. son, my, yeah. yeah, my then 17 year old son. Yeah. yeah. That's, I still have this sense of humor as 17 year old, hey, maybe even 15. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, yeah that, oh, that we, line. You had me do that many times. Right, right. Well, that one particular line. And I know I felt it, bad when I cut it too. It, it, yeah. it just, it, um, it just took people out of the movie because it was like, how does she, you know, know what was going on there? It was a little too. Too wink, uh, wink, too, too, too meta, like commenting too, on, you know, how funny that was, but it, but it wasn't funny for my character. Right, right. It wasn't. Exactly. And I, and I. Yeah, I think in that moment. Lack sincerity, the, the line, the line, not the perform. Yeah. And I also wanted to talk about the scene where Thorne goes back to his high school reunion and as former class president has to do a dance to inspire spirit in the rest of the, the former students, because it's so brilliantly played. And, and Ricky, I know that you had, you know, you got a friend of a friend who was a choreographer to work with Matthew and really figure out what the moves of that scene were going to be. And then Angela, you have the great comedic element of like, you know, she's so attracted to him and watching him in that moment um, and was just interested in the details of how a lot of the comedic beats particularly with that scene came together tell us ricky <laughs> hmm. so i'll tell you what so i wrote in the script the dance to that song and then as far as the dance was concerned i really had one major note for goobs which was to uh treat it completely seriously like don't make a joke out of it uh you know if you can't you know, there's no way he was going to become a perfect dancer in three days, right? So the idea was to uh, to to try to, and that that sort of flawed performance would be a perfect and what exactly what we're looking for. And he had the confidence to do that. You know, a lot of people would uh, maybe make it a little more hokey, you know, to be like, hey, you know, I I'm purposefully messing this up or something. But but uh, you know, he dove right in. As far as the choreography and stuff, though. I came in, I watched one rehearsal. I thought it was fantastic. I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't meddle with it too much. You know, uh, they, they were fantastic. So I just kind of let them do their thing and, you know, was more concerned with how we're going to shoot it than anything else. I thought it was so funny. I was just yeah. like watching Matthew practice. He was practicing between takes outside. Like it was <laughs> And he was doing it very, very seriously. The moves were ridiculous. I mean, I'm an, I'm a dancer. So when I'm seeing him do certain things, it was, it was beautifully done. Like just absurd do it. But he was like the serious face. And, um, and then I had to think that he was hot and Ricky. So what Ricky did was like, he put cameras on each of us um, with the lights kind of flashing and we were, we were looking at him and, you know, kind of enamored with what he was doing. And each person kind of had their reaction to it. 
So he would like Angela now, I don't know what he would scream something. Like pretend you've seen a shooting star. Yeah. (laughs) Or a comet in the night sky or something like that. Yeah. And I would just look and, and then, and then, you know, attack him. And (laughs) see, that's another cool thing. Cause I, I say the same thing to everyone and every actor gives their own cool, unique, you know, you can't, come up with this stuff you know that's why even with the script they say uh, is, was there improvisation they read the lines and it really doesn't matter if they just stick to the lines because there's so much improvisation around those lines yeah you know, yeah what I mean? so yeah. it's like th- there's always improvisation you know so yeah i was saying that earlier i was just saying that um we didn't have to improvise that much because the writing's great I think it's great. It's very specific, you know, exactly what he knows exactly what he wants to tell. And he gives us the freedom to, to just tell it by sticking to his words. Cause the words, they take care of you. The improvisation in between you find it cause it has the room, you know? So yeah, that's the stuff that makes it so fun watching, you know, cause yeah. there's so much, I mean, I wouldn't have, I would have never thought of half of these things they do. And it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's so, it, it, that's the most fun part of making them. Ricky, did you tell Josh to draw a girl on the paper? Uh, yeah, so that was in the, it that was, was in the script. script. Mm-hmm. It's just that the way that he did it though, he was like. Oh, exactly. Like, I mean, there's a million different ways that that could have happened, right? It's, it's yeah. just, I don't know. It's so much and fun. Andy, Andy Milanakis, like when he's like very sincerely talking about his issue with his wife wanting her to get fat and all that so, because so he doesn't feel insecure. It was really touching. Like I was so yeah. moved. I was, a, a lot of these moments were just very heartwarming because they're relatable, relatable, real things just done in a funny way. How, how do you do that, Ricky? How do you write these truthful characters and they're all so different? Um, well, Barbara, I kind of just stare at a a white wall and um i you know you don't know i don't, know. I don't really know i just kind of write until people can it's do something it i would like to see you know yeah. and also i mean i don't i don't know there's you, know. you do you read a lot of scripts and you feel like either some of the characters sound too much the same or i don't know the dialogue isn't good or there's something just not right about it and then you read scripts and you go, wow, this one's good. And I think that happened. Well, I'm sure they're more the same on the page than before the, you know, you all get a hold of it. Maybe. You know, it, it, and, and that's, I, I, like saying, I do believe that. Helps, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and maybe, maybe two characters are too similar on the page, but, but they're, they never are, you know, in the right hand so but it also feels like that was definitely there from from the iteration of the script like when you're introducing us to the members of the coven and we have those cutaways and you get to see an image of them and we get a little descriptions and the way that they're written every character has not just their own identity and backstory but also their own voice as a character and the dialogue that they deliver as well um and so when you were kind of coming up with all the characters in the coven how were you thinking about all the different facets that you wanted to bring into these characters because even if we're only getting little snapshots and little snippets of certain characters we still get such a sense of them well i again that's that that is really truly the the cast right so the exercise with with this writing this there actually was a little bit more of an exercise than some of the stuff i wrote because i knew that you know i'm a cynic by nature and i knew that i didn't want to make a cynical movie so i actively tried to you know, strip the movie of cynicism and make it earnest, as earnest as humanly possible. And then so, you know, by virtue of that, then I write every character as, you know, super honest, fearlessly honest. Mm. Um, and then, uh, and then, you know, they each have, you know, a vice or two, and there's, there's, there's little bits and pieces of, of character in the script, but truly with a movie like this, the cast, the, the, the character really is 2D until the actor gets old of it. It just is. It's, it, it, you know, it, you cannot, you know what, a script is a blueprint for a movie, right? It's, it's just, it's a script. It's a, it's a thing that exists uh, so that another thing can exist, right? So without the cast, I mean, the cast made all that happen. 
And, and again, that's the fun thing to watch. I mean, that's, you do all that work so that you get to have fun and, you know, uh, it's fun for me to watch actors be awesome. I don't know. Yeah. But it definitely comes across on screen as a project where yeah. everybody had a lot of fun in making this. And thank you so much to all of you for sharing the details about crafting this film. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Ricky, Barbara, and Angela. Thanks for talking to us. Thanks yeah. for having us.